In this video, we'll be updating our view because now after our view is loaded, we are set up with MBF view controller that has a container or array that includes four dogs in it. We want to be able to press a button and go through the dogs. However, just adding a button might not look the best. So I'm going to introduce another Apple made class and its name is UI toolbar. So let's go over to our storyboard and let's find the toolbar. So we can go down to our object library and I'm going to add this toolbar. We can drag this into our project and let's go ahead and drag it to the bottom. Now we see that what happens here is our labels get covered up. So I'm actually going to first move up both of my labels so I can select them both and move them both up. And I want my toolbar below it. And I'm going to go ahead and move these labels back down so they line up nicely. And I'm going to go ahead, oh, I moved the whole image view there. And we want to just line these up nicely using the blue guiding line so that there's a nice little buffer here. So I'll set them up right there. So now we have both of our labels moved up and our toolbar at the bottom. We want to figure out how to make our toolbar look nice or how to customize it. So we notice that by default, our toolbar came with a button and the button's name is item. The item button is on our toolbar. But I think it would look a lot better if it was on the right side of our screen. How do we accomplish that? Well, we have another object that we can add view object, and this is called a flexible. So you just type flexible in, and it's going to be flexible spacebar item. We can go ahead and drag that into our project, and we're going to drag it to the left of our button here. We see that line comes up. And what this is going to allow us to do, if we select this, is it's going to allow us to move how far the item is. So I can drag this back like this, or I can drag it all the way to the end here. I also want to rename my item. So let's go ahead and name this new dog. And we notice that it will automatically resize to give enough space to show up on the screen. And last, we need to hook everything up. So let's go ahead and open up the correct ViewController.h file. So we're going to be opening up mbfViewController.h by holding down the Alt key. So we go into Assistant Editor mode. I can go ahead and resize these windows so I have enough space to see my whole view. I'm going to select my button here. So make sure I have my button selected. And you can also check that the button is selected by looking at your document outline. So I want to make sure I have my bar button item selected and not my flexible spacer. And holding down the control key, I can drag to my header file. I'm going to drag up to the top here so I have my uh, methods together. Generally you put your properties and then your methods, but since we already have our method up here, we can just go ahead, as long as we keep them together, it'll look uh, pretty clean. And I can go ahead and give this a name. So I'm going to call this new dog bar button item pressed. We're going to give it a type of UI bar button item. And we're going to make sure that the connection type is action. That's very important. If you make an outlet, this won't work properly. And we can press connect. And this looks very similar to our previous UI button IB action that we had set up in Code Coalition mini tutorials. Since we previously looked at methods, we can now analyze this method with a little more vigor. I'm just going to go back to single view and go to mbfviewcontroller.h so we can read this a little bit easier. It's all in one line. So we can start here. We learned that void is a return type of nil or nothing, and we can also return different objects. So we see that we have an IB action here. And we can think of IB action as something that returns nothing. IB action is just there for the computer to know what's going on inside of our view, and it's a way for the compiler to understand that this is hooked up to a view object. Um, but this method does not return anything. In fact, IB action gets type depth to void. The argument, as you might have guessed, is our button, right? So we actually have access to the UI bar and button item that's on our screen, and it sends it when this method gets called. So it's an argument that's available to us inside of this method. Let's go ahead and go to mbfviewcontroller.m, and we can go ahead and define the functionality that will occur when we press this button. So I'm going to go ahead and add another return. And the first thing we want to do is we want to use uh, an integer to capture 
the number of dogs that I have in my array. So I'm going to write int number of dogs. I can set this equal to self.mydogs, and I can call the method count. Count is a method that's available to all arrays, and it counts the number of objects that are currently in that array. Self.mydogs is available to us because view did load gets called when the view loads up and we create our array we give it an object value and we add our objects to this array and later when I press my button this array is still held in memory and it still has all these dog objects inside of it. Next let's write another line of code so we're going to say int random index is equal to arc for random and we'll say modulo number of dogs. And we're using two new concepts here. First, we call arc for random, a function that returns a pseudo random number between zero and any number we choose. Here, we're choosing number of dogs, which is going to be equal to the count or the number of objects in my array. Remember, because of zero based numbering, our array actually starts at zero. So our revised range should be between 0 and our count minus 1. By using modulo operator or this sign we see here, we are constantly or instantly able to scale numbers to that size. The modulo operator works by giving the remainder. For example, 6 modulo 4 would yield 2 as 4 goes into 6 once with 2 left over. Check below in the notes section for some examples and a more thorough explanation. In our next line of code, we're going to access a random dog. We're going to create a variable to capture that information from our array using a random index that we just generated using the modulo. So to do that, we're going to first use the class MBF dog. We're going to create a pointer and we're going to say the variable name is random dog. And we're going to set its value equal to some element from my array. So we can say object at index, and what this does is it, when we give it an index number, which we'll do right now, we can say this is equal to random index, which we know will be an integer. It'll give us back that object at that index where it will return that object. And since we know that right now we only have MBF dog objects inside of our array, we can capture it with the variable name random dog. Finally, we're going to use that random dog and update our UI. So we can say self.myImageView.image is equal to random dog dot image. We can also update our breed label and we can set that equal to random dog dot breed. And finally we can update the name. So we're going to say self.name label dot text is equal to random dog dot text. Uh, excuse me, dot name. Now when I press my button, the UI will update to the information for my random dog. Next, we're going to add one line of code that's going to say sender.title, and title is the property that allows me to update the text on my button. And we're going to write and another. And we're doing this to illustrate that the button is available to us inside of the method. And the name of the button is sender. It gets passed into us as an argument. It's of type UI bar button item. And I was able to see my bar button item when I added it on my toolbar when I dragged that into my storyboard file. Let's go ahead and run our application. And we're going to see that most of the time when I press my bar button item, I get an updated dog. But that sometimes, like that time, my dog doesn't update. And there's a reason behind this. It's actually going to be a challenge you guys can attempt to solve. But for now, most of the time, my random dog is being generated on my screen.